Welcome to another episode of the Ambient Mellotron here on the Ambient iPad. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the ways that you can make the modern Mellotron, in this case the Mellotron M4000D family, sound like an old ancient Mellotron. I'm not going to use any external effects. I'm recording the audio directly into GarageBand, but I'm not using any effects there either. So let's start with kind of a basic classic Mellotron clean sound, <laughs> as clean as a Mellotron can sound with no effects. So I've chosen the three violins from the Mark II sound library. So classic Mellotron sound, I have the Mellotron here set up with the default setting so there's nothing that's been introduced to mimic uh, an old Mellotron. To do that you go into the configuration menu, we'll do that here. Now I did try to have a camera set up over the menus here so you could see what I was doing but it just wasn't really clear so I'll have some screenshots going at the same time so you can see the menu items I'm in. So the first thing we want to do is go, the, there's a number of settings here in the configuration menu. There's sound settings and um, keyboard settings, MIDI. We want to go down to the uh, audio settings. And this is really where you can manipulate or change the characteristics of the modern Mellotron. This is a sample based instrument. Uh, there's a large version, the M4000D. I have the Mini and then there's even a smaller version called the Micro. There's a number of uh, settings in here that you can change but generally they sampled the original Mellotron tapes, so the master tapes. And so you get the idiosyncrasies of the tapes but not necessarily any of the strangeness that an individual uh, mechanical Mellotron can impart so that's why they have some settings in here where you can add some of that also very similar to the old Mellotron the old Mellotron every single key was one tape uh, in the case of the modern Mellotron every single key is a separate sample from the original tape so um, notes sound different depending on what the player was doing they may have hit a note differently, pitch may be off, a little more vibrato. There's cases where they were hitting the microphone, chair squeak, so all of that comes over to the modern Mellotron as well. All right, so we're in the audio settings menu. Um, in here, there's the first setting that uh, I wanna look at is they call character. So there's a few different options here, and this essentially applies an EQ uh, against the uh, straight sound. So there's one called M Mellotron M400N, which is what they call essentially new tapes. So the tapes are brand new. That's what you heard already. No difference there. Uh, the next setting is uh, the Mellotron M400E, and that is meant to mimic the equalization, the EQ curve that was typically applied to tapes in the 70s for the M400. So this is what that sounds like. So let's go back. Here's the new tapes. And then the EQ curve applied. So for this violin sound, it seems to take away a little bit of the low end, certainly, and the mid range as well. So once more, here's the new. That has more of a rounded sound than this. That would cut through a mix more. But there's there's others. There's other options. There's also the Mark II. So that really seems to jack up the low end and the mid-range. Let's compare that to the M400E, so the, the EQ curve from the 70s. And then again the Mark II. So you can hear that difference. Let's compare the Mark II against here's the new Mellotron tapes. So if I had to put them in order, as far as kind of the darker sound to the brighter sound, we'd go Mark II. And then the new tapes. And 
and then the EQ curve from the 70s. So it all really just depends on the type of sound you're, you're going for. And you need to experiment with the different sounds in the Mellotron with those EQ curves. So for instance, the Mark II is really dark. I've tried to, you know, you apply those to some of the Mark I sounds and uh, that are dark to begin with. And it's, it's, I would call it muddy. There's one more setting, which is the Chamberlain. And uh, that's what this sounds like with the strings. So that's really clean, really, really high end. I'm not even going to compare it against the Mark II, but here it is compared to the uh, EQ curve on the M400. And back to the Chamberlain. So you can hear a big difference between those. Um, the stock sound is essentially the new tapes, and that's what I use. That's um, not too not too dark, not too bright. And here, here that is one more time. For the purposes of uh, this demonstration, though, I'm going to stick with the uh, curve from the M400, the 70s, because it just adds a little more high end. So again, you can experiment with uh, those different settings to essentially you're just applying an EQ curve to the sound, uh, depending on, on what you need it for. Now, you, you then have to save it and it does apply to all of the, the sounds on the Mellotron, so you can't set that per sound. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not, I'm not gonna kinda go back and forth between, oh, well, this is what one sound sounds like with that curve, this is what another. I just pick the strings, very classic Mellotron sound, uh, to, to demonstrate the differences there instead of jumping back and forth. So uh, the next setting here that's interesting is um, the pitch. So there is, a, there is a pitch knob on the Mellotron. So <laughs> you can have a lot of fun with that. Uh, and, and there's a number of settings here to um, manipulate that. So Right now, we have what's called pitch snap semitones off. So what this means is that it's a smooth curve with the pitch up and down. When you turn pitch snap semitones on, it steps, essentially. And then the next setting will keep that on. You can control the, the, the ramp time. So uh, essentially the slew rate of the pitch control. And you know what? I am going to turn the semitones off because it's easier to um, demonstrate with that off. So let's turn that on. Actually, the, here, here's where it off, with it off. <laughs> So it's pretty real time as you're turning the knob. It uh, it's changing the pitch in near real time. There's uh, a number of different settings here. It goes through from one to six. So let's start with uh, two. So you'll hear. So it just takes a little while to get to that point. Now you really hear it on the highest setting. So I'm just moving it to one spot, and then what you're hearing is, is kind of that ramp up time to get to that change of pitch. So let me do that again. Actually, I'm just going to change the pitch, and you'll hear. And again. So it's really dramatic if you change the pitch knob quickly, so let me try that. So you can hear. See, I'm removing my hand right as I get to that point one more time. So you can you can have some fun with that too. Uh, that definitely mimics um, 
I believe the motor within the Mellotron, depending on the voltage and the age of the motor, it could take some time to, to make some changes. The next and, and really the last setting that, that you have at your disposal on the Mellotron is the motor modulation. So um, this, this really encompasses what I was talking about before with the voltage um, discrepancies that can impact the motor. Uh, and the motor is attached to cap stands for the tapes and that's really what it's impacting. The, 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 uh, the way that um, from a, it's like a belt drive uh, to, to control the cap stands. And um, you have a number of, um, it's not just on or off. You can really go from uh, what's essentially, there's no motor modulation at all. So uh, the cap stand frequency is, is, is solid. Um, and that's, that's the way the, the, this Mellotron comes. The, the idiosyncrasies are within the samples of the tapes, which are part of the original tapes. And then you can apply stuff that essentially applies age to the, the, the hardware itself, whether it's the motor, the cap stands, the EQ, uh, the tapes themselves, right? By putting one of those older, like the Mark II EQ curve on it, the, the, you could even make the Chamberlain tapes, which for the most part sound way cleaner than the Mellotron tapes sound really old too. But back to motor modulation. So this is, this is clean stock, etc. So you're hearing some vibrato, a little warble in there, but that's part of the tapes. So as we start raising the motor modulation, do you hear that? And that's only on 10. You can go up to 50, I believe, yeah. So here's 50. So really warbly. And then I'm just kind of going from 50 all the way down. Of course, you get 7.5 to 8 seconds on the tapes. So this is the one setting that really makes the Mellotron sound like it's been been on the road for many years and not well taken care of. So what what I'd like to do here is I am actually going to change the sounds uh, for, for the whole Mellotron. I'll save these settings. Um, so let's just add a little of the motor modulation. You can hear a little bit of warble there. I've got that at 15. I'm not going to change the ramp time or anything like that. I will change the um, the EQ. Right now, it's it's on the 70s EQ curve, which makes it sound a little cleaner. <laughs> the Mark II. You know what? Let, let's really go old school. So I'm going to keep it on the Mark II. EQ curve, you can hear that motor modulation. Let me save this. Save on exit, use the right one. We're saved. Actually, I'm out of, uh, I didn't realize the pitch was off. So this is the Mark III violins with the Mark, excuse me, Mark II violins, three violins from the Mark II sound library with the uh, Mark II EQ. And a little bit of that warble. And my ear gets used to pretty quickly the EQ aspect of it. You still hear that, um, you know, a little bit of warble there adds a little bit of character. Um, let's let's try a different sound here. We're in a we're in the we're in a different mode too. I need to change. Index by category, we want to do by machine. Okay, let's go back to the, uh, well, let's, we're on the M400 here. You can hear what the, um, the M400 has violins as well. I think it's essentially the M, the Mark II tapes. They're really dark. Three violins B it's called. And then with the Mark II EQ curve, it's really gonna be even more dark. Try to remember that sound. I'm gonna. I'll go back in and change the curve, and and you can hear. But um, let, let's be in the Mark II. I want to get to the flute. All right. You know what? I want to go in there and change the. Let's change the warbling. Um, so this is. I'll change the EQ curve while I'm in here. 
So motor modulation is on 15. This is zero with the flutes. And let's jack it up to like 30. So that's what really old tapes. Let's just keep it on 30 for the uh, for these demonstration purposes. I'm going to change the character setting to the the M400E, which is the 70s EQ curve, just because it's a little more high end. Can't really the flute's a dark sound, anyways. Let me go back to the modulation. That's just really seasick. Uh, go to 20. Okay. Now let me save this, and we'll save that, we're saved, and let me go to the M400 violins. This is the three violins B. So this actually would sound like an old M400 that's been on the road uh, a bit in the 70s. It's got that EQ curve. This is what uh, the violins on the M400 sound like. So I would never use that much motor modulation. I, I think five and 10 just adds a little bit to it. I'll do that quickly while I'm talking here. Um, you know, but, but as, as you can see, as you can hear, there's not a lot of settings, but they do dramatically change the sound. So I've gone from 20 to 10. We're still on the M400 violins with the M400 EQ curve. So there's a little of that modulation in there. Let me save this and we'll go back to uh, a different sound. Okay, we're saved, let's just cello. I'll just stick in the M400 since we're using that curve. Here's, here's some voices. Uh, the eight voice choir mix. So again, I have the modulation set low, so it's not really dramatic, but it, it just adds a little so that it sounds like. You can hear it a little in there. It depends on the sound, how dramatic it is. Again, you, you're not setting it by the sound itself. You're, you're, you're mimicking the whole instrument. So uh, the motor's a little old, the voltage is a little off, the tapes are stretched a bit, and it's gonna be like that across all the sounds. Let's go to um, two saxes. So you can hear that warbling. And then two brass, another, whoops, wrong side, uh, another famous Mellotron sound. So I like that, for me, it's subtle enough. It just sounds like, you know, it takes a little of the edge off. I mean, look, I typically have used just the stock settings, which makes it try to sound as clean and normal as possible. But again, these are individual high quality samples of each individual tape, which represents one note on the Mellotron for the sound. And whatever happened when they were recording that sound, um, you know, the, the two saxes here, you're not hearing the weirdness just because of the warble. See, oh, somebody came in a little too late. Um, you know, they recorded each note individually. So you get, again, you, you get uh, some vibrato, some pitch changes. Then when you're adding, this is two saxes, so two instruments, that's really. A little pause there between the two people. So, um, you know, you can definitely uh, change the characteristics of the Mellotron. It starts from a place of trying to be as new as possible, uh, and then you can kind of go and, and take it all the way down to an instrument that's really been uh, 
uh, on the road for a very long time and neglected. So just using the configuration menu on the Mellotron gives you control over a lot of the uh, characteristics of the sound. You can make it sound as new out of the store as possible or you can make it sound like it's really been on the road for a very very long time, was sitting in somebody's basement for decades and you just plugged it in and you're trying to hear what it sounds like. Uh, you could use external effects to even uh, do some of that and um, to manipulate the sound even more but what I wanted to demonstrate here is that this is a mono instrument uh, just like the Mellotron was um, yeah it has direct outs for each of the two sides uh, each of the two banks here but I'm just using the uh, the, the, the analog mono output um, and uh, just to demonstrate what those different uh, settings can do to the sound well I hope you uh, enjoyed this I hope you were able to get a feel for the ways that you can uh, manipulate and change the the Mellotron sounds to uh, fit a different era, fit a different tune, however you want. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and good luck with your own music.